I myself have been guilty of prescribing people advice. Oh, here's what I learned. You should try this. Here's what I believe. Here's what I've read. I think you should try this. Do this for X, Y, and Z results. And I think that age of advice is dead. I, for one, am over it. The example that I usually give is the Joe Rogan example. Everybody wants the Joe Rogan podcast. Everybody wants the Joe Rogan platform. They want that sense of freedom. I can say whatever I want, do whatever I want on this platform. So they think that they got to get the studio. They got to spend $50,000 on the equipment. They got to get a young Jamie. When the truth is, Joe Rogan's a one-for-one example. If you want Joe Rogan results, then you need to become a stand-up comedian. You get a job on a sitcom with Phil Hartman. Become the host of a reality TV show game, Fear Factor. Become a UFC commentator and then start a podcast. He's a one-for-one example. That's the only way. So the advice, like what is the advice? Start a podcast. Do you. Joe Rogan gives that advice all the time. That's how we're able to get like a Jocko Willink. That's how we're able to get uh, who else has done a podcast. Like Andy Stumpf did a podcast because Joe mentioned it and so on and so forth. So like that's general like you should start a podcast. That's general advice. But here's how to be a Joe Rogan. Take that advice and shove it up the, you know what, where the sun don't shine because that shit is for the birds. And I've been guilty of this. And going into 2023, I want to really eliminate the advice energy. Here's another personal anecdote um, that I got from at Josh Terry Plays, who I think will be a future podcast guest for me it's sometime in 2023 because this guy owes me one. And uh, he gave me this advice in 2020 going into 2021 to create low effort content. And he used this word. He said, create the most pathetic, minimal piece of effort content that you possibly can. Do that consistently enough and on a long enough timeline. Quantity enables quality and it, it'll, it'll evolve into something that you could call cinematic. Let me break that down. So here's what Josh would do. He would sit down at a table. He would write a video transcript essentially on notepad, like just good old desktop notepad. And he would say, evaluate the source and context of the advice. Consider who is giving the advice, what their qualifications or experiences are, as well as the context in which the advice is being given. This can help you determine the credibility and relevance of advice. That would be the video. He's watching it from his computer. That's that. And he gave that advice to me. Just do that. And I did it for a little while. I was consistent enough. And I think on a 30 to 40 day timeline, I grew maybe three to 4,000 followers on TikTok. It was really good advice. And it, and it, was, it was helpful. But it, it wasn't so much, you know, I didn't get the following that he got. He, I think he was, I don't know if he was trying to prescribe that. But now he's a coach and he's giving people that sort of advice on how to better their business, better their mental health, what have you. And like, we only have our own subjective experiences. Like we only have what we've done. For instance, like if I were to tell someone, here's how you get your dream wife, that worked for me. So I only have the example of one that wouldn't necessarily apply and work for you. You would have to go back to 2012 where you met this person and do exactly what I did to capture that person, write down the list that I did to find and track this person. It doesn't necessarily apply. So you got to consider your own values and circumstances. Think about what's important to you, what you want to achieve, and consider how the advice aligns with those values and goals. Also consider your own unique circumstances and how they may influence the applicability of the advice. It might not necessarily work for you. And and I, we live and we're so inundated in this culture where there's master classes, there's take my course, there's here's how you get 100,000 subscribers in under a year, here's how you monetize this, that, and the third. And it's really just advice that has worked with people and they want to productize their personal subjective experiences and successes. And it's great because people will buy that and it'll, it'll work. And so that feels like a proof of concept, right? People are buying my products. So therefore I'm successful. So therefore I'm right. It's such a leap. 
it's such a leap and it so many of these cases are scams man and i don't ever want to come off as someone who's spammy or scammy and that's just like not my style and that's not what i want to do so i want to ask you guys to consider the pros and cons of the advice that you're receiving weigh the potential benefits and drawbacks of the advice consider whether or not this is the best course of action for your given goals, values, and circumstances. And don't be afraid to seek out additional perspectives or advice from multiple sources if you are unsure. Take the aggregate of information. Take the abundance, the average, the median of information and apply it to your life and see what's applicable and see what works for you. It's not a one-size-fits-all. I wish it was, but different people have different experiences, backgrounds, and needs, so what works for one person might not work for another. The Joe Rogan example, there's so many people who want like a certain body type, but if you're not six foot six, 270 pounds, like you're not going to look like the mountain from Game of Thrones. You're, if you don't have Michael Phelps's thin, leany, you know, swimmer body, if you weren't born with the swimmer-esque tone and framework, then there's nothing you can do. There's no advice that you can take. There's no uh, workout regimen that you can uh, apply that's going to give you a swimmer's body, right? Like that. And yet we, we see so many courses of people saying, hey, do what I did. Here's how I got famous, for example. I wish there was a one size fits all solution to these problems, but you know, there's different approaches that might work better for different people in different situations. So you really have to audit the information that you're getting, right? Advice is often based on personal opinions and subjective experiences rather than objective experiences and research. If so, man, there's so much advice on the internet. There would be a, here's what fucking definitively works. Do this and get the exact results that you're looking for. Everybody would be famous. Everybody would be a successful entrepreneur. Everybody would be running their six-figure business. And I wish it was that way, but there's only, there's only what works for you. Some advice can be outdated based on outdated information and may not be relevant and applicable in a, in a current context. You know, people have been giving me like Facebook advice that would have totally crushed and worked in a 2012 like economy. But today in 2023, it, it, it wouldn't necessarily apply. So <laughs> there's so much outdated expired information that is being repackaged and repurposed as like, I'm the one that invented it. Here's the Knives Monroe, Indy Darling's way manifesto of how you should do it when it's just Gary Vaynerchuk information repurposed and repackaged. And you know what I mean? And people are selling it and hawking it like it, like they invented this stuff. I see it all the time on Instagram. It, it may, maybe it's, maybe I need to audit my algorithm. Maybe I need to unfollow which i have been doing unfollow the people that i've been indoctrinated and inoculated with inside my own echo chamber and my bubble i really need to audit that even more so um, advice can be influenced by personal biases or agendas which may not always align with the needs or best interests of the people who are seeking the advice think about that there's often more than one way to approach a problem or a challenge or different approaches may have different pros and cons some advice may be overly simplified or oversimplify complex issues leading to incomplete or misguiding guidance misleading guidance um, so I have this pulled up here because it helps me stay on track with the video. I go back to at Josh Terry plays. Josh is a, is a cool guy. I, I'd like to call him a friend. You know, we both come under the umbrella of working with Robert Gardner. Shout out to Robert. If you're watching this, Hey, what's up? How you doing? Hopefully you're doing well. Um, so I look at him and I as equals, but this guy is a life coach now that has a million followers who, who got lucky, you know, playing the slot machine and is now giving people like that sort of advice, you know, and it's just really basic. And I, I just think like more people and myself included need to just be iterating and trying new things, not necessarily finding like a dogma or a doctrine that we can apply our lives to and, and just wholeheartedly say, this is what it's going to be. And I'm going to live and die by this sword. That might not, that might not work for people. Josh giving me that advice only worked so much, but it works for him and, and he hasn't deviated from that path. It's Josh Terry advice that works for a Josh Terry. He's a one of one. It doesn't work for a Knives Monroe. Advice can be conflicting or contradictory as different people may have different perspectives on the same issue. It's important to critically evaluate the sources of advice and consider the context in which it's being given rather than blindly following all the advice. 
And it's ultimately up to the individual to decide what advice to follow and what to ignore based on your own values, goals, and circumstances. So take everything that I'm saying with a grain of salt. I'm just looking at at really letting go of giving advice, which I know that's I'm telling you, don't take it, um, which is advice, but it really just, you know, um, if I'm being quite honest, go fuck up, go make mistakes, go learn, go fail, go risk humiliation, risk being roasted, take that information and apply it to what you love to show up for consistently. And I think amazing things will happen. I know that's vague and you can't really package that in a way to, to sell books and courses and things like that. So, um, look, I, I might sell y'all something in 2023, but I promise it's not going to be, um, a scheme or a masterclass or a course where I teach you to be a Knives Monroe. I just don't think that works, man. And so I've, I've been seeing a lot of that and I just really want to rebel against it. That's my video. If you've made it this far, let me know in the comments below. What are some contradictory advice that you've received that you're that you just you know know doesn't apply in 2023? Know that it's not going to work for you. And if I've ever given you some advice or tips or tricks and it has not worked for you, please let me know. Uh, I'm I'm being vulnerable and naked here, and I want you to tell me because I want to audit that behavior, and I really just want to bring the best sources of information and inspiration that I have, keep you guys inspired and informed to make the best decisions that you possibly can in your life, and I think that's how you make an impact. So I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. It means the world to me. If you've made it this far, leave a comment, like, subscribe. I appreciate that. I'm going to try to make consistent daily content. I know I'm saying that, but here I am. I'm showing up for it. So keep a force field around your heart, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.